Hello everybody, welcome to episode 3 of the Blueprints to C++ game programming series. Today we are talking about U functions. So let's have a look at the outline. We are talking about what U functions are in a kind of general introduction. Then one main aspect of U functions are specifiers that we will cover each one separately with examples and and then we are talking about meta tags like with U properties that we covered last episode, U functions have also meta tags and uh, also specifiers. So we are covering these. Then a more kind of like guideline and best practices of how to use function parameters. And then we are closing the video with general topics and then the tip of the day. So let's get started. U functions. What are U functions? U functions are a bridge between C++ and Blueprints. U functions allow for Blueprints to access U functions or even C++ code to allow calling Blueprint functions. So U functions, they similar like the U properties, they have specifiers and meta tags. So you can see in an example down here, we define, like we did with U properties, we define a U function macro several specifiers and a meta tag or several meta tags. So in this case, it would be blueprint callable in the category startup with a display name of initialized cone actor and the function is only called void initialized. So if we don't define a display name meta tag, then the function name is used. So let's have a look at the most important function specifiers. So the specifiers define how Blueprint can call C++ functions, how C++ can call Blueprint functions, and how these functions appear in the Blueprint graphs, specifically how the nodes look like with input-output parameters. So the four most important specifiers are Blueprint callable, Blueprint pure, Blueprint implementable event, and Blueprint native event. And category, like you've seen with your properties, they just define in which category, either in the details panel or when you right click in the event graph, for example, and try to type in or see the categories of where properties and functions are. So really the most important specifiers are one to four. There, there are more specifiers and meta tags as well. They're all explained in the online documentation that I will provide a link for, but these are really the most important ones. So let's cover them step by step. Let's start with Blueprint Callable. Blueprint Callable is a U function that is implemented in C++ and can be executed in a Blueprint. And when it's executed in Blueprints, these nodes appear as a blue node with an in and out execution pin. Let's, why not dig right into code and see how it looks like. So we define a U function, make it Blueprint callable, give it a category of, let's say, cone functions. Let's make it a void function, call it test func, maybe with an integer as a parameter. So let's call it value. Well, you can see with the quick list, this function needs to be implemented. With writer, it's really easy. Alt, enter, generate implementation, and that's it. So let's, let's do, for example, um, we will cover debugging and all that stuff later in future episodes, but just to show you one little feed, debugging feature is the UE log. And here we can specify text that is uh, output in the output uh, log uh, panel in the editor. So let's say warning that we can see it as yellow and give it a text and call it test func called with value and then we type in the value. So the percent %d is who is familiar with printf and so on should feel at home and this is how you could specify with the ue log that we output the integer. 
So let's compile this. Let's open our cone. And here we are in the event graph of the cone. And when we right click, you can see we define it as cone functions. Here you can see the category. Here we have our function. And in we hook it up and type in maybe the value 17. So if we compile, save, and here you have the output log, clear log, you can get it into from developer tools, output log. So we hit play and you can see down here, test func called with value 17. So this is how you can really access C++ code from blueprints. And this is most useful when you have a big graph that you, for example, want to bring as a whole into one function or make several blocks into one function that, you, that your graph gets easier to uh, view and that you can then better, or for performance wise, if you have lots of math functions and so on. So blueprint callable functions are really a nice way to group together several nodes into um, one function or have a complete function that has lots of math calculations and so on. So this is a way for you now to be able to call a function from blueprints. This is blueprint callable. Then what's blueprint pure? Blueprint pure is a const function. That means that it doesn't change any data. And also this function needs to return one or more values. This this is like blueprint callable, also implemented in C++ and can be called from blueprints. When you've worked with blueprints before, you've uh, often seen those greenish nodes that don't have execution pins. These are blueprint pure functions. So they calculate stuff and return a value. So there are two ways to define a blueprint pure function with the blueprint pure specifier. Or there's another way you can call, make it even blueprint callable and this value like must return a value and it needs to be declared as const. And then blueprint recognizes it as a blueprint pure function. So let's have a look. Let's create one blueprint pure, pure function. Void test pure func. And of course not void. Let's return an integer. Let's, yeah, no, no parameter. And we make it blueprint pure. Alt enter and implement. And then we return like 17 or let's say 25 to see a different value. Compile this thing and then go back to our event graph and you can see here now if I go into my cone functions we now have a blueprint pure test pure func and the return value and I can even hook that up so if we compile save clear the lock and play it you can see value 25 and like with all pure functions, oh, let's stop that. Like all pure functions, they don't have execution pins. So every time it's used, everything in there is calculated again. If this function here would return a value and you would access this return value several times, then these nodes basically, they cache these values. But every green pure function is always calculated from new, just as a reminder. So this is blueprint pure. And let's go back a second to show you if we change this to blueprint callable and make this a const function, we have to change it here. Make this a const function. Let's remove this one first and compile it. Go back to the editor, test pure func. And you can see here, it's also a pure function with that return value. The only thing is that in here, now you see the target self. We will change this in a second when we come to meta tags, how to hide this, for example. So this is the only difference. If you call use a blueprint pure specifier, then it doesn't have that target self. And if you call it blueprint callable and define it as a const function, then you have the target self there but it's also a green node without any execution pins. 
let's continue. So now we covered Blueprint Callable and Blueprint Pure. Both of these, like I mentioned, they can be called from Blueprints. But what if you want the feature or the functionality that you define a function that is implemented in Blueprints, but that you can call from C++? And that's the Blueprint Implementable event. This function is not implemented in C++, but it can be called from C++. And the implementation is done by overriding it, the function in the event graph from that actor, for, for, from our cone actor, for example. There are two different ways how you can override. If the function has a return value and you override it in the event graph, it appears as a function in Blueprints. And if it has no return value, it appears as a custom event node in the event graph. So the, the red run. So let's let's do this. Let's uh, create a implementable event. Just copy this. Make it the blueprint. Oops. Implementable event to show you. Okay, first we have a void return type. Call it test implementable func and have let's say integer well so and as you can see here we don't have any squigglies so this means this is perfectly fine we don't need an implementation here in c++ the unreal header tool and build tool will all compile this and without any problems so let's do this let's combine compile and you can see here already in writer implemented in zero blueprints. And once we implement this, then you can see this is implemented here. So let's go back to our event graph and usually do it like you overwrite. And then you have your function that you can implement in that list, let's say here. And you can see it basically appears as a custom event type. And if we it's like duplicate this, call our function and let's break this connection for a second and now what we can do is let's go back to code for a second in the begin play and let's call test implementable func with the value 76 for example compile it again. The function is completely implemented in here and we call our C++ function that locks the info in the output lock. So if we clear the lock, hit play and you can see 76. So essentially what we did is we defined a function in C++ that is implemented in blueprints, but that we called from C++ and the designer can then decide what he wants as an implementation in, in blueprints. And this is what it comes down to. Like you ha usually have C++ programmers that lay out the foundation of code and then through you properties and you function specifies what designers can do and are allowed to do. And this is one way to say, I have a function in C++ or I have a function defined C++ that I want to call, but let the designer handle it in blueprints. This is what implementable events are for. And then we have native events. And these are kind of special specifier or U function that it's similar to the blueprint implementable event that you can create a blueprint version or function, functionality in blueprint, but you can also create a default C++ implementation. And this is mostly important for, or is used in situations where you want to have a general default implementation, let's say explode. You have an actor that once it's dead, explodes or it's shot or whatever, and you have a simple C++ implementation that handles most of the code, but then you want to enable designers to maybe add features like a particle system or other stuff that should happen in between. And in Blueprint, you have there now with native events, there are three things, three possibilities. You define the default C++ implementation, but the Blueprint doesn't override it. So only the C++ implementation exists. Then the Blueprint can override the function and do its stuff and or its implementation and then also call the parent implementation, the C++ implementation, or it can completely 
override it and not even call the parent implementation. So let's have a look and implement the explode function. Then our cone actor, when it reaches the top, for example, explodes, gets destroyed. So let's do that. Let's copy this, make it a blueprint native event, call it void explode. And you can, and now like what you've seen in the slides, these preprint native events, you define the standard U function. This is the one that is called from preprints and or and code or code, but you need the implementation one. And this is like a kind of how the C++ game framework works in, in many cases where you have the underscore implementation notation. So and this is gets compiled and the code gets generated by the Unreal header tool. So what we would do is create explode implementation, then implement this one. And we would just say this dot destroy. So our actor will be destroyed. And if we go to our logic, for example, here where the currency is max height, then we say we want to explode. So we call the explode function, not the implementation function. So everything is implemented. We hit compile and then go back to the event graph. And if we call event explode, Then we create the custom event based on that. And let's say, or let's say for a second, we don't. We have the default implementation and let's just hit play and see what happens. The actor gets destroyed. So this works. So if we now create the event, override it, in blueprints, and what you can do is to call the parent function at call right click at call to parent function. If we do this, then it's the same as implementing the default solution. But what we want to do is let's say we are a designer. So exploding comes later. What we want to do is let's say spawn um, emitter, a particle emitter at a specific location, which is the get actor location. Get actor location. What we select is this comes from the uh, default um, data that we imported, that we selected. So this should be in your project. Let's say call it explosion. Then we have a delay maybe for a couple milliseconds before we then call the native C++ function or the uh, implementation. Compile this, save it, and hit play and see what happens. Boom, explosion. So this is how you can really use these Blueprint native events to define a C++ implementation, a default one, but the Blueprint is able to override it and add new stuff to it. Okay, these are the specifiers. Let's cover important meta tags. What you've seen from the U properties from last episode, it's similar, it's display name, tooltip. There's a short tooltip for, I think, the some special menus. And then there's the hide self pin. And this is what I mentioned a couple of, in the beginning of the video where you se seen, let me show you here, let's go to cone, where you have that target self input pin. And what we can do with that, I won't cover the, the others. It's, it's the same, like the display name and so on. So then let's add the pure function. Let's add the meta tag. Hide self 
pin equals true. Okay, so we have the height self pin specified, defined. Let's compile it. And you can see here that down here in test implementable func, we implemented in, in blueprints and that's why you can see it here with writer. That's so cr crazy cool that you can see in which blueprints you implemented it. If you click here, implement it in blueprints, you see test implementable func in BP cone underscore C. So it's really awesome. So anyways, let's go to code. And you can see here now that our test pure func, the input test self pin is disabled, is hidden. That's how you can do it. Oh, and one, let's say one thing I forgot, when I see this here, I told you that if you implement implementable events that are that have a re no return value, they appear as as um, a custom event. Let's hide this for a or delete this for a sec. And if we define this one with a bool, for example, a return value, compile it, go back to the editor, and overwrite the function test implementable func, then you see it will be implemented as a as a function in blueprint. And we can do the same thing like call the test func from here. Put the value in here, this one here, and return true. And this would be the same thing. So just two way different ways if the blueprint implementable function has return value when you overwrite it in blueprint it appears as a function if it returns void then it's or has no return values then it appears as a custom event so these were the meta tags so let's go to function parameters these are like guidelines or best practices on how to use parameters in functions in C++. Not only U functions, but functions as well. If you define an input parameter that is not changed, define it as const. So what this would mean is our integer val here, for example, or let's say our test func over here, we would call it define it as const because it's it's an indication to other developers especially if you're working in a team that they can see okay it's const we're never going to change the value in there it's a good programming style and we would do it the same here. and you can see like in writer if i don't do it he would say like value may be const and then alt enter you can add the const to it so writer itself really helps you out in many cases defining when to define const and so on. So this is the first tip or guideline. Then secondly, output parameters are passed as references. This also means specifically for U functions that when they are shown in blueprints, it depends on where that you can see it as an output pin or input pin. So if you want to define an output parameter that is shown as an output pin, you need to pass it the parameter as a reference. So if let's say we have our, or let's say create a new function. Let's create a new U function, blueprint callable. I should have copied that. And call it void test input output and we have our input let's say inval and we have our if we want to return an in32 for example we add a reference and call it out well for example generate that and usually what you could do is like outval equals inval or whatever um, so this value is returned with the input value let's compile it go to our code go to our event graph let's remove this for a sec and 
let's go into our cone function, test input output. And so what you can see here is that we have our blueprint callable function, we have our in value and we have our out value. This is how you can specify output and input parameters. If we, and you can do the same thing, uh, let's call it like output val1, val2, output val1, val2, out val2 equals inval, whatever. So compile this and then you can see we have two output pins here. So this is these are output parameters. And for pointers to classes to, to appear as output parameters, this might be a little bit awkward for you first time seeing it um, if you're not really familiar with C++, but way to make a class type which comes as a pointer. To make this as an output parameter, you need to add a reference to the pointer. So let's say we add in front of here an A cone actor and a cone actor. And we want the way this would work now. Let's do this first. If we specify it like this, and compile, then you can see you have a cone actor object reference. If we go back and make it a reference and compile it, then we can see the cone actor is now an output parameter. And then what they're also, what is also important if we have structs, like for example, F vectors, F rotators, and so on, or your custom structs. If you use these as an input or an output or as a parameter, then what usually if you're not using a reference, it means like a copy is passed in. So the whole struct would be copied. If you are having structs that or that parameter and know that it's not changed, it's only read in that function, then it's best to make it a const reference. And in this way, Blueprint also recognizes it because of its const it's not changed, then Blueprint recognizes it as a input parameter. So let's have a look if we, let's say, replace the cone actor with an F vector. Maybe call it location or whatever. In this case, if you do it like this, then Blueprint will recognize it as an input parameter that you can edit in Blueprint. Or let, let me show you what I mean. First, I need to change this. But in this case, if you call this function in C++ or in, in Blueprints, the vector is copied. If you pass in a location, this location is copied, and not the original location, or location used. And you can see that in here, now we have a location that can be edited. You can add in blueprints, you can add these values, a new kind of new location is, or new vector is created. But if you really want to pass in the location, and mostly when you call this function several times or have big f structures or in, in a loop or whatever, it's good practice to not, and you know this vector is not changed, then it's good practice to really say, you make a const vector, a reference out of it. So it's not getting copied, it's getting the actual reference to the original location is passed to the function, but the const prevents it from, let's say, saying location.x equals three. You get an error, you can't change it. So, and once you do this and compile, and then you can see here the vector is passed in as a reference and you can't 
added it in here. So you would need to create, let's say, call the get actor location or whatever to it. So this actual vector that is coming out from that function is actually passed down and not copied. So, and this is a real good approach, real good coding practice to do when you really don't need a copy and you can pass in a const reference. It's so much better also for performance then. So, and one last thing is if you are, or the last option here, if you have several output parameters and one is a bool, then use the bool as a return value and the others at output parameters. What that means is if we take our function here and we would say instead of doing like, okay, a bool which is a ref and out bool or be out bool as it should be called, you could do this, but a better, or as a guideline, a better approach is saying you have the return type bool and then in here type bool and let's say return true and compile and if we go to our cone you can see we have that return value that bool here as well okay that's it for function parameters let's go over some simple general topics like what you've seen in the previous episode with the U properties, the camel case naming convention of functions is the same or like the, like everything, it must begin with uppercase. And then importantly, what I kind of like mentioned in the last episode, the shadowed variables, when it comes to parameter names, shadowing is not allowed that you might know from other languages. So this means if you have a variable declared in a specific in a specific scope and you have the same variable name declared in a higher scope then it's called it's not allowed the compiler will define it as an error so what that would mean is if we say our function test func here would be called speed and we have our speed up here defined this isn't allowed so if we would change this here and compile it and log out speed. Then you can see cannot be defined in test func. It's already defined in scope, blah, blah, blah. Shading is not allowed. So what you usually do is, is kind of what, what Epic also uses in these cases. You have these in and out prefixes that you can use. If it's an input, you define in. If it's an output parameter, you define it as out. And if we call it in speed and it compiles, then you see no errors. So this is shattering and no compilation errors. So, And here you have the link. I will also put it into the comments section down below, a link to the documentation about functions. There you can see more specifiers, more meta tags, stuff like which I go over when we cover multiplayer in the future down the road that you have specifiers specifically for your properties and your functions that have to do with reliability and special other things for multiplayer and so on. So here what we cover today or the last two episodes is really the essential stuff that you need to know and can get you started with programming C++ in Unreal. So as usual for the last episodes, there's a tip of the day today. <laughs> um, it's called uParam. So what does that mean? If you've seen that, what I explained earlier, that parameters that are defined as a reference, they are recognized as output pins, so as outputs in Blueprint. And But if you, let's say, have a struct, for example, or what we cover later down the road, collection class like tarray that you want to pass as a reference as an input because you want to change it, like adding new elements to an array or changing the XYZ values of a, of a vector. So what you need to do to make then blueprints recognizes it as an input parameter, we use uparam ref in parentheses in the u function declaration on the par parameters. Let's try that. So if we, let's do our input output function and just say redefine f vector location. So if we do this, then 
then the blueprint will recognize it as the blueprint will recognize it as output parameter. But if we now and we don't want to put const before because we want to change it. So if we now put a uparam macro in front of it and you only define it here, not in the implementation. And now what we can do is change the location the x or c equals three, whatever it works. And if we compile this and have a look in the editor, and if we have a look at our input output function now, we can see that location is an input parameter, but it's passed in as a reference. This is how you can specify parameters as input parameters, even though they are references. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. There will be many, many more to come. I really want to make this series as from beginners to advanced users, or really show rather the beginning steps to more complicated topics, how you can program in C++ in Unreal and with blueprints in combination. So I hope you will be part of this journey. So if you want to get notified when new videos are coming out, then please subscribe. I, if you have any comments or so, please let me know, suggestions or whatever. So yeah, just tell me and please like the videos. It would really help me and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.